Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, this beautiful day. We're going to be talking about the one of the most important factors of game development. And this is really important for you to nail, because if you're going to release a game, if you're going to sell it, if you're going to, you know, widely distribute a game, you have to implement this. There is no way around it, you can't just implement something from the 1980s that didn't have this, oh, excuse me, and then expect it to be fine because any game without frame rate independent gameplay is going to get a lot of negative reviews all right it's going to just on that like if if a person can't play it because they have a little worse you know they're not playing at the intended 60 fps they're playing at 50 fps and they can't play the game properly then you got a problem now i can understand if the game doesn't work no matter how frame rate independent it is it doesn't work on 10 fps or something it still looks like it works but it doesn't really work mechanically because everything is so scaled up that's understandable but if it doesn't work at 200 fps or 60 fps that difference you got a problem so what you do to fix that is you make your game frame rate independent and that is basically like this I'll explain it in words first so when you move a character a certain amount of time or you increment a integer a, cer a certain amount or a float every frame you know, that frame is just going to increment it by 10, for example. Like, if you move your character 10 per frame, it's going to move every frame 10. Now, if you have, at, if you make your game perfect at 60 FPS, what about 200 FPS, where every, f every second the game, instead of moving 10, it's going to go ahead, or instead of moving, like, 60, because it's 60 frames per second, and you're moving your character 10 every frame, it's going to move 60, right? or whatever or 60 in a second now if you have 200 fps in a second you're gonna get a whole different experience because you're gonna move a whole whole lot more you know your character is gonna just zoom across the screen because you got a higher fps what you gotta do is then you gotta look at the fps like how long does it take for my update function or how long does it take per frame for my game and then scale everything according to to that. So at 60 FPS, we're gonna get something about 0.016 of a time for every frame. So we're gonna just multiply everything by that time. Everything where we move or scale stuff, we're gonna multiply with that time, and that's gonna anchor us to 60 FPS for that speed. And then when we go up to 200, that frame time difference is gonna be different. So when you're multiplying it with that difference you're gonna get the same effect as you would get at 60 FPS the same amount of movement but in actuality that DT is so much less you're moving less per frame but per second you're getting the same effect so I hope you followed me there I hope I made sense and that was actually a pretty good explanation if I have to say myself so what you wanna do is you wanna make a clock object clock and you wanna make a float DT alright a delta time it's called and that is the time it takes for every frame. So when you go in here, you're gonna do dt equals clock dot restart get as milliseconds. All right, because milliseconds returns a float. Seconds, no, uh, seconds. Sorry, get as seconds. It returns a float, and we'll be able to store that. So when we go through a frame, this clock is gonna restart itself and give DT the time it had before it restarted so when we go through this whole frame we come back here and we say DT restart it's gonna give us the time of that frame so what I'm gonna do is at the end of the frame I'm gonna do a C out C out DT and I'm just gonna have that running and new line I'm just going to check it out. So at 60 frames per second with nothing really going on, we're going to see what we get. We get 0 0.016. And I said that because I've made games on this computer before. It's pretty really, really fast computer. And every frame is going to go crazy. And that is at 60 FPS. Now, if I change this to 200 FPS, the set frame, room, frame rate re limit, uh, we're going to get a whole different DT. We're going to get 0 0.04 something. So I know what it is at 60. And I want to make my game work at a frame rate that's constant on your computer. And then I want to start making a frame rate independent. So you know how much you want it to work at 60. 
and then you customize it with DT to work at 60 and I'm going to show you how we do it and then it's going to work for everything else so that's working 0 0.016 is about what it is I'll remember that and we're going to make a shape okay rectangle shape shape all right shape dot set fill color we'll we'll do all this fill color color white we will shape that set size ah size vector 2f 50 50 something okay just a regular size and we'll make sure we can move this object so we'll go in here we'll update stuff if keyboard is key pressed keyboard uh, a uh, shape that move uh, so let's give it a regular speed all right let's give it let's say it's gonna move minus 10 F at 60 FPS all right zero so 10 is our speed we want it to work this is the speed we wanted to work at at 60 FPS this is how it should look is what I'm trying to say so D W S uh, minus 10 10 okay so now when we when we look at this thing here whatever this is doing at 60 FPS is oh whoops uh, window dot draw god damn it shape so whatever is happening now is the ideal for a game that's why I like to do this without putting in DT first so this is how I want it to move but if I do this at 200 FPS remember every frame is gonna go there's gonna go a lot more frames in a second now so my, my thing is gonna flip out it's gonna go so fast and if I make it 20 it's gonna go really slow and that's not what we want I want it to move the same no matter what although bigger steps every frame but it's gonna move the same but 60 this is how I want it to look so I'm gonna get a reference for it again I'm gonna get a feel for this okay so there we go it's moving 10 per per thing okay so what I need to do is I need to multiply this by DT so what is that so that is 10 multiplied 0 0.06 as I remember 1 6 as I remember it was oh shit I should I should know that as I remember it was at 60 I'm gonna double check my little numbers here 0 0.016 just about so that's 0 0.16 per frame now that's gonna be really slow so I want a multiplier that is gonna be kinda constant no matter what I do so I'm gonna make a float multiplier multiplier equals about 200 F because if I say 0 0.16 calc 0 0.16 because that's what we get per time we wanna multiply that with 200 we'll get 32 no I want what did I want? I want 10 so 10 divided by 0 0.16 that is 62 so I'm gonna multiply it by about, by about 60 60 let's say 60 that's my multiplier so if I do 10 multiplied by DT and then multiplied by 60 I'm gonna get a at 60 frames per second I'm gonna get a movement of about 10 frames so I'm back at that and then but at 200 I'm gonna get something working the same for me and so on and so on so multiplier multiplied by multiplier this is how I like to do it multiplier now this is kinda tedious but you have to do this remember you have to do this there's no way around this now see how it's moving regularly now like I wanted it to and if I change the frame rate limit if I completely remove it it's not gonna zoom off it's gonna be the same see it's still the same it's still the same now at this unlimited frame rate if I were to remove for example this A thingy let's see how fast it moves in the A direction 
See? See how fast that moved? It went off screen. Because it wasn't really... You know, it. I, my FPS is so high that it was ridiculous. It, I mean, it shot off screen. There was so many updates per second. Alright, so if I do this to 20 now, if I put this 20, we're still going to get the same effect. Like, it's still going to look somewhat playable. See? See how it still moves a lot? Per st every step is a lot more. But it's still making it kind of dynamic to the FPS. And this is the thing. I don't know if you guys noticed, but in my game series, when I'm making the SFMO game with shooting, and any game I'm making here, when I set the frame limit to 60, it jitters. Because there's so much FPS, it's trying to cut it down. It makes it jittery. It makes it not fun to program games. Now, when I if I can remove this and make it frame rate independent, you know, it looks really smooth. It looks really, really smooth. Or if I have a frame rate cap of over 200, it looks really, really smooth. And that is what I want. And to do that, I'm going to have to make it frame rate independent. So remember to have a set frame rate for your computer where you know it works. Make sure you get a speed that looks good on that frame rate. Then multiply it with DT. Get the, get the actual number you get from that. So I got 0 0.16 multiplied with my number of choice. Now to get back to this number at this frame rate, I have to multiply it with the multiplier. Okay, now this is going to be different at other frame rates, but it's going to make it look like it should look at 60 FPS. I hope you followed me there guys and girls, because this is really important. Now the next stage of this video, I'm not going to do it now, I'm going to do it in the next video, but watch it, that is with acceleration. So this is the final movement, you have to do this in acceleration stuff as well. Okay, so remember that. And hell yeah, thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you in the next video.